Hello, is this thing on? Okay, this is a quick warm up for our sophomore promise writing day. This is also a review of literary devices, poetic devices, and how you can use them. Um, a literary device is something that helps to make uh, poetry true, okay? So this is uh, called an acronym. Uh, it's Mrs. DT first. The M stands for meter. Okay, and these are the different kinds of meter. Won't have time to go over that. R stands for rhyme. S stands for sound effect. D stands for diction. T stands for tone. F stands for figures of speech, like metaphors, similes, or personification. I stands for imagery, which I think is the easiest literary device to understand. R stands for rhetorical devices. And S stands for structure, how it's built. T stands for theme, okay? You are not being tested on this, but these are tools like word choice, tone, um, whether or not you have internal rhyme or like sound effects, repetition, alliteration. And obviously a theme, the theme is your sophomore promise, but these are all tools that you can use while writing poems to help you get to that monologue. Let's do a quick uh, poetry warm up, kind of identifying. So I will pause the video and we will go ahead and we will make a list of um, obstacles, or things that have happened in our life, problems that keep us in our cave. Okay, so now that we've made that list, um, further on in this packet, I selected three that I would elaborate and I would write a poem about it. Now within our circle map exercise today, you can write your poem in the circle map, right? Or this can be like something that follows the circle map, whatever makes sense to your learning. I'm gonna go ahead and I will identify uh, literary devices in two, at least two of these. So we'll do similar to when we did Dunbar, we'll do yellow for imagery. Imagery can be anything that you see, hear, feel, uh, smell, any of the senses. Um, and then imagery is a kind of literary device, so we'll just do a general literary device. And I'm gonna do my best to point out as many literary devices as possible. So lit device, literary device. So that's literary. Okay, so the key with poetry is that you show and you do not tell. This is what literary devi devices help you do. Show and do not tell. So like an artist, you're painting a picture. Um, for my three poems, I started with a photograph, right? And the photograph can represent like the solution, like the positive or the negative. You don't have to have a photo, but I just wanted to make that connection with the identity box. Okay, so like zone in on your identity box today when you're thinking about social problems or a moment in your life. You wanna identify one moment that you wanna kinda of like leave behind or one moment that you wanna learn from, right? Cause it's hard to leave behind moments. So zone in on one moment in your life, any moment where there's a hidden lesson, okay? Okay, so let's just annotate for um, literary devices. Zooming in, sorry the text is small, but I wanted to get a lot in in a short amount of space. My three-year-old arms stretch towards the Michigan sunlight. Okay, so this right here is um, visual imagery. Pudgy, three-year-old arms stretch towards the sunlight, right? So again, you're painting a picture my mother's shadow, uh, ooh, an error, was a shadow across, so I could say my mother was a shadow, across the dusty wood floor, larger. Okay, 
So shadow would be, you could say it's an image, but it's also an allusion to the cave. And then this is imagery. So this is an allusion to the cave, like cave. So an allusion is a connection to anything that you're learning in history, Mr. Garcia's class. You could talk about the cave or your identity box. Her history could suppress and drown my sweet ignorance. Mm, so those are literary devices. Mama, I want some milk. I want some chocolate milk. Okay, so this right here is dialogue. So if you're, in, if you're including what someone said, that's dialogue, that's also a literary device. So dialogue. So it's also imagery because I can hear it. Childhood is a tapestry of sugary drinks. So that's a metaphor. When you say something is something and you give it a symbol, that's a metaphor. And feeding the ducks with my mother, she used to laugh. Okay, and this would be an image connecting to this photo. I can't see it. She barked in a shrill voice, echoing on the walls, describing how it sounded, allusion to the cave. The poisonous fires fueled her, threatening my future. More allusions to the cave. Shadows, silence, and her mask kept her from seeing my dreams. Yes, we do. My young legs weak, like the prisoner simile in the cave stood up reaching for the bright light. The chocolate milk was my childhood. That's a metaphor. Simple innocence. So when you say something is something like the milk is childhood, right? And you draw that comparison, that is a metaphor. We use like or as, that's a simile. And then like a desert wind. So here's a simile. So this is would be figurative language. Simile. So this is the F in Mrs. DT first. Her hand pressed against my green overalls. So again, when you're describing how something looks, that is visual imagery. And again, this whole thing is filled with allusions to the cave alluding to cave, right? We see repetition of shadows. She threw me back into the cave. The room tilted 45 degrees up and back. Imagery, describing what something looks like. And I flew falling. Flew falling would be also alliteration right so flew falling flew falling so playing with sound alliteration notice how things aren't really rhyming right because that may be hard falling so we got repetition into my mother's history so much so much of this unit is you're like okay you identify a moment i was in the cave here i was being oppressed i don't want to repeat this history so how are you going to change oppression depression suppression Okay, so you have something happening with sound here, right? Where you're using similar sounds. My blonde, wispy hair crashed to the ground and my baby back slid into the wall. Imagery, baby back alliteration. Oppression, depression, suppression. So you can be very poetic in your promise. It may help you to perform. This is repetition. You repeat things that are important. This is the moment that my life had to change. This is the moment that I chose to speak. I reject history. I will paint my own destiny. History and destiny sound the same. So you got the sound working in your favor. I promise to be an upstander for myself. And then you have the theme. Okay, I will pause the video. Okay, turn to your partner. How does the poet use um, literary devices? Um, like illusion and imagery. And we got a lot of metaphors with the chocolate milk and dialogue. 
Turn to your partner. What are some literary devices that you might use in your sophomore promise? Okay, let's do one more. So this problem, like you want to identify a problem, something negative, was people oppressing us, pushing us down or not listening, right? Okay, so here's another problem. Thinking negatively or being trapped in anger. Uh, I also said sea of sadness, which is alliteration. So again, the promise is the solution. That's the theme. We got to identify a problem to write about to identify your change. Mornings make me miserable. Whoa, talk about alliteration. MMM, right? So that's alliteration. Rushing to work is painful. Ooh, you got some slant rhyme or like some end rhyme right there. Slidle. My children need so much. So not everything needs to be poetic. Sometimes you can just say a fact, right? And brevity is a soul of wit, something that's short, right? So you don't always have to be showing and not telling, but it's good. The walls of my cave are a weighted mask, right? So the cave is a mask heavy over my eyes, imagery. So again, you have that illusion, that metaphor connecting. Exhaustion and anger dim the light. And in my cave, um, this right here, this is personification. In my cave, all I see are the particles of dust floating in the air. The shadows and light of the fire keep me from seeing true beauty. I want to give up, I want to quit teaching. I don't want to be tired anymore. But when I received the text that my old, typo, old drama teacher was in hospice dying, I lifted the heavy chains off of my neck. Okay, so again, illusion, right? So this is this idea of leaving the cave. Once again, and drove like lightning, simile, drove like lightning towards the bright ocean and beach. Venice Beach was the outside of the cave, metaphor, right? So the beach is the outside of the cave, metaphor, symbol, figurative speech, something is something. Colon, so saying it another way, an infinite sky of stars, that's imagery. A sea of green leaves, imagery. And you could also say this is a metaphor as well. So comparing things to pictures, I'm showing, I'm showing like the difference between like the negative and the positive in my piece. And I climbed up the dusty mountain to see her allusion to the philosopher leaving the cave. Illusion. My legs grew stronger and my eyes saw her sister crying. Okay, you gotta put those details in there. Again, you're writing about one moment for your promise. Muscles burning, tears swelling behind my eyes. Was I ready to say goodbye? Okay, I'm glad this showed up. This is a literary device, rhetorical question. Um, usually when students are stuck with their promise, I tell them to ask a question, like, or especially a why or a how question, right? So asking those questions cause your audience to think, why, how? I lifted myself into her aqua green room and saw Mrs. Smella lying and dying. Okay, you got some rhyme showing up there. When will you write your book? She said to me with a smile. So this is dialogue. Dialogue. The sun was so bright that in that moment, imagery, extinguishing the cave's darkness, illusion. I was a philosopher again and no longer angry. So you have to like draw it right about a moment that like caused you to make a change. It's like, and maybe in that moment you haven't decided what the change is yet, but in your promise, write about how you want to change. So this is the change I want to make, right? And then I, you're, I'm like, this is also a metaphor saying I am a philosopher, someone who wants to leave the cave. I could do anything. She believes I can do anything. Repetition. What is your secret? I whispered. Okay, once again, dialogue. Use those quotes. Turn around, she directed. Dialogue, quote people. That's also imagery. 
And with her sister's strength, for the last time my mentor stood up, she sang, love one another as I have loved you. That was the last time I saw my teacher. If I teach like her, I can always be with her. Okay, so repetition, repetition, repetition. And then you got the theme, ending in the theme. I promise to love others as my teacher loved me. Theme. Okay, so you got like solutions, right? Like I'm going to be an upstander for myself. Solution. Solution is love. Honoring someone's legacy. Okay, so for all of our problems, we have solutions. We have to paint a picture with literary devices. I hope this intro video helped. Okay, turn to your partner. How in this poem do we use literary devices and imagery to show and not tell?